So then it comes to the next question in terms of if all of these PARP inhibitors are available across every indication, how do you choose which one? And of the PARP inhibitors no <laughs> that are available for those indications we talked about for maintenance versus treatment, and those lines are blurred, right? Mm -hmm. How do you choose which one? And so it comes to this, down to the side effect profile. And you're doing really well on Recaparib and Tolerate Well. All of these drugs have some nausea, mm -hmm. um, which you're experiencing. And what and for some of the drugs, it's been worse than others. So with the Elaparib medication that first came out, that was in capsule form. Yes. And patients had to take 16 capsules a day. So That's a lot. Morning, I yeah. didn't hear about that. That's a lot. Yeah. I take two pills in the morning and two pills at night. Right. That's if my I, chemotherapy. If I had to take four pills in the morning, I would be nauseated. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I feel like some of the nausea that was initially reported was probably just due to how much people were taking. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, we talked about the fact that people had to have three prior chemotherapies before they could even go on the drug, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe they had more disease burden, and, and that could make, they maybe had more GI symptoms mm -hmm. that made mm -hmm. it hard. So what we often talk to our patients about is um, making sure they eat something, a little light amount of food, 30 I'm a minutes before they take. Girl. Yeah, perfect. About 30 minutes before they take the medication, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then that helps. Did you find that that helped a lot? It helps a lot. It really yeah. does. And hopefully, we did our job when we first gave you the medication that we talked to you about nausea and talked to you about doing that to mm -hmm, avoid it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, Good. I take lazapine. Mm -hmm. Lazapine. I don't know how you say it. Lazapine. That's lazapine. Right. That looks mm -hmm. great for nausea. Right, so that's a really interesting drug. It's an old drug, and it just came out that it really can help with nausea, so we've been using that a lot. And it helps with the PARP inhibitors because there's um, one PARP inhibitor, specifically a Laparib, that you can't take a really common um, nausea medication for um, because it induces one of the enzymes that's involved in the oh, drug okay. metabolism, so you have to be careful. So the lazapine, I found, has been really useful to help with the um, nausea. Yeah, it helps me a lot. I take one at night, and it takes care of me for the whole next day. All right, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But other patients have some different types of side effects with these various drugs, and I just want to talk about some of the more common ones and get your thoughts on those. Okay. So um, the Neurapera medication, the PARP inhibitor, is only given once a day, which that's nice, that's easier. And, um, it, but it, its side effect profile is a little different, and it uh, is associated with more thrombocytopenia. And actually, oh. it can be like grade three or four thrombocytopenia, mm -hmm. which means that the platelet counts, they're getting lower, typically not clinically significant. I mean, most of the platelets are involved in blood clotting, so I personally haven't had anybody have bleeding issues on it, but we watch them really closely, mm -hmm. and you might have to dose reduce. But you have to do weekly um, CBCs, and I typically do it for about eight weeks. Um, and not everybody does that, but just to make sure that you stay on target watching those blood counts. If somebody's doing great, you can back off. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So that's uh, that in about a third of patients. Um, all the patients can have anemia with any of the PARP inhibitors. It's about I think I have a little bit 20 of that to 25%. Going on. And we watch that closely. I don't typically transfuse unless you absolutely need it. And then we can evaluate for other causes of anemia, like a B12 and folate. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it is due to the drug. You can, um, if somebody has a hemoglobin less than eight, you can stop the drug, um, do other supportive measures, and then dose reduce if you need to. Um, and then the Recaparib and um, Neuraparib can also reduce your absolute neutrophil count, um, oh, which is, okay. you probably remember us watching that really closely yeah, when you're on chemotherapy. I, yeah, mm -hmm. um, and rarely have I seen it cause such bad problems compared to when you're on chemotherapy, mm -hmm. um, but it's something that we evaluate for. Um, the um, Rucaparib drug can be associated with a slight increase in creatinine because of the way it's um, involved and in, it's an off-target effect through the mate transporter. Don't worry about that. I know, but I remember <laughs> my, my levels were a little yes. high last month. Yeah. Yes, and so we watched it closely. We didn't intervene though, they're just slightly up. And, they'll, and mm -hmm. it was interesting, most of the time you see this early and then it stables out, stabilizes out. I think I did, finally. Yeah, right, and you've been on it for about five, five six, five, months, six now. months now, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mid-June, I think, is when yeah. I started it. So most of the time I just follow those numbers and don't have to intervene at all. So I think it's really important that the physician just understand that can be something that you see with this drug mm -hmm. that doesn't need a dose reduction unless you have uh, severe you know, grade four um, toxicity, but you need to evaluate for other causes. Yours was so low, we didn't really pursue that, but um, if somebody's really worried that creatinine starts to rise quickly, think about other causes of blockage of the ureters. So check a renal ultrasound um, 
and um, just have it on your radar. What else could be going on that somebody mm -hmm. has an increase in mm -hmm. their uh, creatinine? But typically, it's not due to renal function issues. Yeah, that was my first thought when I heard about it. I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, but you've yeah, been fine. I'm fine. And then the other thing is it can cause your liver enzymes to go up slightly, but it's not liver injury per se, but mm -hmm. just something to monitor. And again, you don't have to dose reduce it if it's only uh, slight elevations. It's not associated with liver dysfunction mm -hmm. um, per mm -hmm. se. Um, then there's some different types of side effects too, like rash and uh, photo, oh like um, sunlight issues. Um, I have a little bit know. of that actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. notice it now? I do notice it, yeah. That's yeah. another side effect. It's yeah. not bad. Right, so for the most part, mild side effects. And, mm -hmm. and a lap rib um, has predominantly the, the nausea issue, but I do think that was capsule related. Now that they've moved to this new tablet formulation, I think it's improved. And um, the anemia are probably the most common things. But with a lap rib, this is kind of a weird fun fact. Um, you want to avoid grapefruit and Seville oranges. Oh, <laughs> yes. really? I haven't had either of them yeah, yet, so okay. I, yeah, some people are huge uh, citrus fans and others. It doesn't really matter to them too much. But those are all kind of things that oh, people take into account. I drink account. a lot of cranberry juice. <laughs> well, I don't. I think you're okay there. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> but those are all things that people have to take into account when making these decisions.